So one day the little girl was playing in her grandpa's front yard when she notices a pair of glasses. She asks her grandpa, Grandpa, what do the red glasses do? The grandpa looks at her and says, Oh, those glasses, those glasses are so you can see people's paint. Put them on. Let me know what you see. So the little girl puts on her glasses and she looks around and sees a young couple walking by and she says, Grandpa, why does that girl have a shield in front of her? And why does the boy have a shield in front of her? Why, why does she have a big shield? And why does he have a small shield? The grandpa looks at her, his granddaughter and says, we all walk around with defense mechanisms in our life. The bigger the pain we experience in life, the bigger the shield we carry to defend ourselves with. You see, the problem is almost none of us are aware of our triggers and our defense mechanisms. And because we're not aware of these reactions or why they keep happening, we keep living a life where we continue to react to our outside environment. And so we are quick to explode on our spouse or partners because of a certain look that they gave us. Or we're quick to explode with our parents, our brothers, our sisters, our coworkers because of something they said or something they did. Or maybe we're quick to explode in public having to defend our belief systems or positions the way we saw all those people in the stores getting upset and angry because they didn't want to put on their mask. We all live in a state of constant reactivity to what's happening in our environment. And so because we keep reacting and having these triggers in our life, we keep creating the emotional roller coasters in our life. And because we don't understand why we're reacting, why we have these triggers, we have complete loss of our emotions and our behaviors. Have you ever felt like this before? So let me tell you one of my triggers, my mom. <laughs> my mom for years has always been a control freak. Since I was a little kid, she was always telling me what to do. So when she would come over to my house in my 20s and 30s and start barking orders and telling me what to do, boom, I would explode. I would get defensive. I would start to raise my voice and sometimes say hurtful things. And then later on, I would regret what I said. And I didn't understand what was going on inside me. Why was it when she would come over and say a few things, I would lose control of my emotions? Have you ever felt like this before? You see, this is happening because underneath your trigger is an old childhood wound that hasn't healed. And because it hasn't healed, every time it gets triggered, your body has to put up a defense mechanism to try and protect you from getting hurt again. I'll give you an example. Remember one of those times where you cut yourself and you had a little open wound there? What would happen when you would touch it, right? Ooh, it would, you would react, a slight reaction because it was a little painful. Or when you accidentally squeeze some lemon on your cut, ooh, a stinging, right? A very sharp pain. But think about that reaction, you know, what level of reaction it was. Now, imagine, or, or do you remember when you had a big cut, a broken arm, a big, a big something that happened? What would happen if I were to come and touch that open wound? How big of a reaction would you have? So I think it's fair to say the bigger the pain, the bigger the reaction. How many of you guys follow? You see, the real problem isn't what keeps triggering you. That's what we all think the problem is. The real problem is two things. Number one, you are not aware of what your triggers are. And number two, you have not worked on healing your core wounds. And so you keep getting triggered and you keep blaming your spouse, your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your mommy, your daddy, your brother, your sister, your coworkers, your friends, the government, the politicians. Heck, even some of us blame the weather for the way we feel. Tell me this isn't true. You see, most people avoid dealing with their emotions because it makes them feel uncomfortable. And rightfully so. I mean, who wants to feel like shit? Or who wants to figure out why we feel like shit, right? But think about this. What have your emotions cost you in your life right now? What have your triggers and your defense mechanisms and your overreactions done? Who have you pushed away? All the constant dramas that you have with your family, your spouse, or your partner, or the tension and disconnection, the breakups and makeups you've had with the people closest to you. Think about this. Is this where you want your life to be five years from now? 10 years from now? Is this where you want to be 20 years from now? The constant pushing people away out of your life because of your reactions. When are you going to do something about it? So before we get into the lesson, really quick, drop a comment below and let me know where you've been stuck. What have been, what have been your triggers in your life? So now let's get into the lesson. Let's talk about what are triggers and what are defense mechanisms. The first one is, what is a trigger? A trigger has three components. The first one is there's a nervous system activation. The second one is there's an emotional reaction. 
And third, it's on autopilot. It's happening automatically without your awareness. How does a trigger get, the, uh, get created? Typically from one big past event or multiple past events where there is no integration. There's no processed emotion. When something happens, if the body can't handle it, the mind takes, takes you, the mind, out of the body and it becomes a repressed or suppressed emotion and it sends it into the subconscious mind. So think of it like this. Each of us are walking around with unprocessed emotions, some more than others. Okay, these unprocessed emotions can be considered traumas, big T's, little T's, big traumas, little traumas. Little traumas can be referred to as developmental traumas, anything you went, you went through while you were growing up. Uh, little traumas, well, it's not too little, but we're talking about multiple, a series of multiple events of physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, a series of neglect, slaps in the face. In my household, slaps in the face were very common. If you talk back to your parents, you'd get slapped in the face. Big events can be a death, going to war, uh, a big death in the family. Uh, getting raped. These are all big events that leave big imprint in your psyche, ready to be triggered. So at any time, now here's the thing. Once it gets suppressed, so you can see it on camera and it goes into your subconscious, you are not aware of it anymore. Okay. But it's there. And anytime you get into an event that's close to or similar or where your mind perceives is similar to uh, a, a, one of these events that cause trauma, you instantly react. You instantly get triggered and activated. Nervous system lights up, then you have an emotional reaction and it goes on autopilot. So let's talk about these three things. When your nervous system, when your nervous system gets activated, you go into survival mode. When you go into survival mode, your prefrontal cortex, your thinking logical part of the brain shuts down, your limbic part of the brain turns up. The limbic part of the brain is the reactionary part of the brain. So you go into hyper arousal. So your body releases, tell it goes into the adrenal cortex, releases uh, the adrenal glands, release cortisol, release adrenaline. You start to get prepared for battle, you know, ready to fight a lion. Then you become hyper vigilant. Now you're prepared to now you're paying attention to what's going on in the environment, right? What, what is the possible threat? You go into fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. This is survival mode. Okay, so what happens when you, this is the prep part. This is the nervous system. This is when you become activated. All automatically, you're not aware of what's happening. This is instant, probably less than a second. Now your defense mechanisms kick in. Okay, so what are the defense mechanisms we have? Think about somebody you know while I read these off. You explode, you act aggressive, you get defensive, you get argumentative, you start to project your anger, or you start to attack the other person, uh, or you panic, you run, maybe you have anxiety, uh, you disassociate, you shut down, or you go into shame or depression, uh, or you people please and you avoid conflict. These are all part of your survival mode, fight, flight, freeze, fond response, my opinion. So if your fight response kicks in, make it easier so we can see it. If your fight response kicks in, some of us explode. We start to act aggressive. Some of us get defensive, argumentative. Some of us start to project. We start to attack. We start to give guilt trips. If your flight response kicks in, a lot of you guys run or you panic or you go into anxiety. If your freeze response kicks in, you freeze, you shut down, you disassociate, you, you get out of your body, you go into shame or depression. Or if you fawn, you start to people please, you avoid conflict. If you're, getting, if you're in the middle of an argument then you're just like, yeah, yeah, fine, fine, fine. I'm just gonna do whatever you want. That is the fawning part. Now, let's talk about the autopilot. When you're an autopilot, you get stuck in what's called a trigger loop. So when you're in a trigger loop, you get triggered, your nervous system gets activated, your physiological, uh, you have a physiological, physiological state change. That means your, your body chemistry changes. The body chemistry drives the emotions. 
the emotions drive your perception, how you're looking at what's going on inside you, how you perceive the world. How you perceive the world uh, drives your judgment. Your judgment drives your behavior. Now, here's the thing. Your emotions, if, if your physiological state now is in survival mode, you're not in a happy state, right? You are now prepared for battle. What kind of emotions do you think you're going to have when you're prepared for battle, right? You are ready to fight, which is why when you get triggered, when you guys are arguing, and I mean all of us, when you're arguing with your spouse, one of you is triggered, right? Something happened. Something happened. You are now triggered. You are now in survival mode. What do you think happens when you stay in survival mode? You're, all you're going to do is trigger each other. You're just going to light each other up. This is why when you guys are arguing, you can never come to a conclusion because you guys end up triggering each other. Everybody is in survival mode where our instinctual response is kicked in. Your instinctual response is kicked in. You're in a heightened state. Your emotions are going crazy. Your perception is flawed. Your emotions will cloud your judgment, right? You're not, you gotta, you gotta grasp this. Your prefrontal cortex, the part of your brain that's logical, is shut down when you are in survival, when you are in survival mode. This is how your body prepares you to fight a lion. Think about that. If you're about to fight a lion, your prefrontal cortex is not going to turn on. You're not going to convince a lion not to eat me. Lion, uh, here are the 10 reasons why you should not eat me. <laughs> There's absolutely no argument, <laughs> no convincing a lion not to eat you if it's hungry. You understand? So your limbic system turns on. You are prepared for battle. Okay, you are hyper aroused. You are hyper vigilant. You are in reactionary mode. You are in reactionary mode. What possible outcome can you have if you are triggered and now your spouse or your mom or your dad or your friends are triggered? There's two people in survival mode. There's no logical thinking taking place. You are in a trigger loop. Your emotions are kicked in. Your perception is flawed. Your judgment is clouded. Of course, your behaviors are not going to be logical. Something is going to happen. This is why we end up regretting the things that we said, the things that we did. And then we go into a cycle of shame because this whole process was already flawed from the beginning in survival mode. Does that make sense? So what do you do? What do you do when you're activated and when you're triggered? Five steps. First one is become aware. One of my mentors used to say, if you are level three or plus in, in emotional reactivity, this is not about what's happening in front of you. This is about what happened in the past. This is about one of your triggers, one of your traumas being touched. Something in the past just got touched. You are reacting now. You are in survival mode. So the very first thing you have to do is become aware. I'm triggered. Okay. Level three plus. Second thing is, Take a break. You need to leave the room. This is the situation you are in right now. If you are in front of somebody, it's two people ready to light each other up. There is no logical conclusion that's going to take place. So you need to take a break respectively. That doesn't mean you get to leave and stamp out of wherever you're, wherever you're at and embarrass your partner. Third thing, pause. Once you leave the room, you pause, become aware of the sensations in your body, where are you being triggered? What does that feel like? And then you breathe, focus on your breath. Five seconds in, five seconds out, you're gonna do it for about five to 10 minutes. The only thing you're gonna focus on is your breathing, not what's going on, okay? Just focus on the breathing. That will calm you down and get you out of this activated uh, physiological state that you're in. And once you're calm, now you get to make a choice. Now you get to respond. Because when you're in a loop, when you're in reactionary mode, you are on autopilot. When you're in autopilot, you lose all free will. All free will. This is happening at a subconscious level and it's happening instantly. There is no choice in how you're responding. 
There's no choice in how you are behaving because you are reacting to whatever you're perceiving into your environment. So understand, when you're in this loop, when you are triggered, you are on autopilot with no choice and you have no free will in how you're gonna behave. By calming down, you get to activate the prefrontal cortex again and now you have choice. So what are the, pro what are the problems you we face when we're being triggered? First one is we're not taking responsibility, okay? We need to get to the point, you need to get to the point where you take responsibility and you understand this is your trigger. You are triggered. This is your childhood issues that are coming up. If you don't take responsibility, your life is never gonna change, right? As long as you keep blaming somebody else for your triggers and your emotional reactions, you have no control. But the minute you take responsibility, oh, it's up to me. I'll just touch the mic. It's up to me. If it's up to me, then now I have the power, I'm empowered to have, to make, to create a different choice in my life. Second one is we're not aware. And I think that's probably one of the biggest issues with being triggered is that we feel so justified in our emotions. We, we believe them, we defend them, we feel entitled to them. You got me mad, you did this, I deserve to feel mad. So we're not taking responsibility and now we're not even aware that we're triggered. So the cycle keeps going over and over and over again. How many of you guys follow? And the third thing, it's a condition response. If it's automatic and you've been doing it for years, we don't even gotta think about it anymore. It's just happening, it's happening, it's happening. So this is what we're up against. How do we start the healing process? First one is take responsibility right now. If you know you are someone that gets triggered and you're starting to understand, hey, maybe I do have some issues from the past I need to take care of, then you have the capacity right now to decide to take responsibility. This is your life. These are your triggers. So first step, take responsibility, okay? Second step, we need to create boundaries around this. Two kinds of boundaries. A boundary is to prevent triggers. If you know certain people, certain situations trigger you, then you need to avoid these situations, right? You are creating a boundary to make sure you don't get triggered. A boundary is a band-aid. It's reactivity management. It's how we go through the healing process, how we manage the healing process while we're going through our healing journey. And the second part is you need to create boundaries to protect yourself, right? So if you're with somebody that triggers, that's easily triggered, that does just because they're triggered, just because they went through past events does not give them the right to treat you certain ways, to have these negative behaviors towards you. So you need to create boundaries. Hey, when you recognize this person is being triggered, then you have the right to leave the room or to protect yourself or to avoid the situation. And the third part is we need to have a coping plan. We need to have a self-care routine. So what happens when you get triggered? What can you do? You can journal, you can go to the gym, you can go for a jog, you can go into nature. Have a plan so when you get triggered, you know what to do. There's a plan. I'm gonna go do this. When I feel this way, I'm gonna go to the gym, I'm gonna go exercise. All right, so we'll finish up right there. So now let's get into the homework. Okay, so here's what I want you to do for homework. I want you to map out one of your triggers, okay? The who, the what, the where, the when, the how. Sit down, journal this, break it down. Who does this happen with? What happens? Where does it usually happen? When does it happen? And then I want you to, I want you to map out the trigger loop step by step. So what happens? What do they say? What do they do? What is the cue that happens out here? Is it the way they, they raise their voice? Is it the certain look they give them, they give you? And it's not about them, this is about you. That's just the trigger, that's what starts the process. Then what happens inside you? What happens inside your body? What emotional reaction do you have? Then what is your judgment? How do you perceive what they're doing? What is their intentionality? And how do you behave? This is 100% about you, not about the other person. Okay, take responsibility. We're working on ourselves. Okay, we can only improve ourselves, not the other person. At some point, everyone needs to learn this, either right now by choice or later in life by force. So if you know anyone that could be, you can use this video, is going through this in their life, uh, pay it forward, do them a favor, share this video with them today. Think about that right now. Who do you know that can use this video? Listen, if you're somebody that gets triggered, I know how frustrating and out of control it can feel like sometimes. 
I mean, we all go through these stages in our life. I've struggled with getting triggered with my mom for years. We all have our flaws and vulnerabilities we have to deal with, including myself. What's important is that you're doing something about it. So if you're watching this video right now, if you're still watching this video right now, then give yourself some recognition. 90% of people out there don't do anything about changing their lives. So I respect you and I honor you for being here today. We all deserve to be happy in life. We all deserve to live the life we truly want to have. And that includes you too. So if you're alive and you're watching this video right now, then you deserve to be happy. You deserve to live the life you truly want to have. But just like everything else in life, change takes time. Change takes work. Change takes time for us to grow individually. You know, a tree is not going to grow in less than a week. That means your life isn't going to change or you're not going to grow and you're not going to create the life you want to have in a week as well. Everything takes the right amount of work and the right amount of effort. So just imagine where your life can be like in six months once you work on these triggers. Imagine having that great relationship and that happy, successful life because you finally did the work you needed to do to change your life today. Are you ready for a breakthrough in your life? Are you willing to put in the work to get that breakthrough in your life? Then make sure you take action as soon as this video ends and implement everything we talked about here today. So here's the power phrase I want you to say with me today. I am responsible for my emotions and my triggers. I am responsible for my emotions and my triggers. Say that with me a few times out loud. I am responsible for my emotions and my triggers. I am responsible for my emotions and my triggers. You see, affirmations allow us to control our focus and control our state of being. So for the rest of this week, I want you to say these affirmations 10 times every day when you wake up and right before you go to sleep. Can you commit to that? Now that you know how to overcome your triggers, you can practice these strategies daily. Everyone knows that mastery is achieved by daily practice and discipline. However, by having a deeper level of awareness and understanding of why you do what you do allows you to reach a whole new level of self-mastery in your life. If you're ready to reach that next level, then text the word free MC to the number below so I can text you back that free download link. One more time, text the word free MC to the number below and I'll shoot you over that free download link. And if you're not in the US or Canada, go ahead and click the link below this video so I can give you access to the masterclass as well. Remember, if you like this video, then subscribe to the channel so that you can get notified when we release our new mastery video. And if you want my free life tips and strategies, then go ahead and follow me at the social media accounts below so that you can get access to these immediately. How does that sound? And make sure you finish watching all seven masterclass intro videos so that you can understand how your mind works and how to stop it from sabotaging your life. Thank you for watching. Namaste. Mm -hmm, that's the beat right there. Hey guys, thanks for staying until the end. Make sure you follow me at the Instagram below to get my free daily life strategies. Click on the subscribe button right there. Make sure you finish watching the masterclass series over here. And if you're ready for the masterclass today, go ahead and text me at the number below so I can text you back that download link. Are you ready for a breakthrough? Okay, let's get it.